Now, when we look at these different functions, these sub-personalities or these motivations that we have, exploration, the first one, exploration, this is it, our hypothalamus, 50% of what our, hypothalamus, what our hypothalamus does is related to exploration. We have found that exploration is probably the most important thing that the hypothalamus controls. 50% of the activity of the hypothalamus is related to exploration, and the other 50% is related to play, thirst, hunger, thermoregulation, and all of the other ones. Listen. Okay. So let's look at exploration and dopamine. The first thing I want to talk about is let's go back to the hypothalamic cat. The hypothalamic cat is hyper exploratory. What that means is that this cat is always wanting to explore. It's always exploring. It's always walking around its environment and discovering. It continues to do this over and over and over and over again for hours and hours. We think the reason why the hypothalamic cat constantly wants to explore, there are two reasons. The first one is that Exploration is extremely important. As I just mentioned, it's 50% of the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamic cat constantly wants to explore because that's its most important drive, its most important motivation. That's one possible reason. Another reason is related to memory. Now, if you think about going to uh going to a shopping mall let's say you go to a shopping mall the first time you go to the shopping mall you're going to walk around you walk around the first floor the second floor the third floor you'll see some of the shops there you'll remember some of them but most of them you may not remember especially if they're not important to you those places that you have been to that is explored territory and you will keep some kind of memory of a little map in your head of the shopping mall and some of the places that you remember. Is it on the first floor? Is it on the second floor? You will remember that. The next time you go to the shopping mall, again, you will explore. You might forget certain places or because you're walking around the shopping mall again, you might remember some new places. The more often you go to the shopping mall, let's say you've gone to the shopping mall 10 times now. You've been to the first floor, the second floor, the third floor, and you can remember almost where every single shop is. You know exactly where the toilets are on the first and second floor. You know where the restaurants are. You have explored that shopping mall and you have memories of this and you have this map in your head with, with memories of where the places are and how to get there. This is completely normal. The more we explore a certain environment, the more memories we have and the more clear our map of that place is. But the hypothalamic cat only has a hypothalamus. It does not have, for example, another part of the brain that can hold these memories. This is why the hypothalamic, hypothalamic cat will constantly go and explore the same places again and again and again. It does not know that it has already been there before and it's, it has already explored that place. It cannot remember what it has explored. So it keeps wanting to explore its environment. Alyssa. Mm, 就是说他这个, 
一个 exploration， 它这个部分是非常非常重要的。呃，第一个原因就是，呃，就是拿那个猫，那个猫来举例子，它那个猫就是脑脑子里面只有这个这个 hypothalamus 这个部分的那个猫，它。经常出，他天天出去，呃，去找那种，呃，去一些他没有去过的地方去，呃，探险什么的，嗯、呃，然后还有一个例子就是，呃，这个 explorer， 他其实，呃，就是比如说你去一个那种，呃，商场，呃，你去，你越去的多的。那它就会有一个那种地图，就比如说你去了十次，呃，你就可能会记得哦，这这个地方是卖什么的，那个地方是卖什么的，然后厕所在哪儿。你去的越多呢，然后它就会形成一个记忆，就像一个地图一样，呃，它会呃，它会帮助你去，就是记得一些东西。但是那个猫啊，它，呃，猫它只有那个。呃、uh, ，hypothalamus 的那个呢，它的大脑因为除了那一个 part 以外，它所有的全都没有，所以说它记不住那些记忆，就是没有那个地图，它只能就是呃天天出去，但是每一次去完它又不记得，因为它没有那个呃能够能够记住这一个记忆的这这一个部分。Now I want to look at. What a normal cat does compared to the hypothalamic cat, and how the normal cat uses its hypothalamus as well as the other parts of its brain. In this example, let's say you have a cat, right? And your cat lives in your house. It's a house cat. Now, house cats. They explore their house when they are kittens. They know where everything is, and they feel comfortable with their home. They don't really like to go outside. Now, there are some cats who like to explore the outside environment, but let's say most house cats like to stay at home where everything is comfortable and safe, and they know where everything is. It's like they are the king or the queen of their home environment. But let's say one day. You decide to take your cat to your friend's house. So you put your cat in a little bag, and the cat, of course, feels a little nervous, a little afraid. It doesn't know why you're taking it out of its home. You carry the cat to your friend's house. When you arrive at your friend's house, you decide, okay, I'm just gonna let my cat free and. My cat can just enjoy this new home environment environment for a while. I'm going to spend some time with my friend, and then later I'm going to take my cat back home. So what do you do? When the cat arrives, you let the cat out of the bag, and what you will realize is that the cat will immediately find a dark or quiet. Or very small, safe place. The cat, first of all, is extremely, extremely afraid because this is a completely new environment. It it doesn't know where it is. There could be all kinds of dangerous things in this environment. So the first thing that the cat will do is basic survival. It will find the safest place to hide and wait. Alyssa. Hmm, 就说它这个，嗯，猫啊，呃，正正常猫，呃，有呃有它大脑其他的部分啊、呃，包括那个 hypothalamus 这个部分的正常猫，它们还在很小的时候，就那种猫仔，它们就会在自己的家里面就去探索。就是因为，然后就对这个环境比较熟悉，因为嗯，一些家猫啊，他们也不太乐意，呃，有些猫他们可能会想出去走什么，但是大部分那些家猫呢，就比较习惯待在自己家里面，因为比较
比较舒服，而且还比较安全，就是所有的一切都是他比较熟悉的。嗯，但是如果嗯有一天你决定把你们家那个猫带到你一个朋友家里面去，嗯，然后你就把它放在一个那种那种装装猫的那种包里面，那种我也不知道怎么说，就是猫包猫包，谢谢，猫包里面把它呃带去你朋友家，然后就想着嗯，它可以在我朋友家玩一下。然后，呃，我们就可以跟朋友聊会儿天啊什么的，啊、呃，然后你会发现那个猫，呃，一到你朋友家的时候，就一打开那个包啊，你就会发现它会很害怕，就是因为，嗯，它觉得这个环境是一个比较陌生的环境，对它来说是一个全新的一个环境，所以说它会立马找一个比较又黑又小，呃，可能相对起来比较安全的地方待着。啊、呃，因为他觉得，呃，这是一个生存，一个一个一个反应，就是一个动物本能吧。他可能觉得就这个地方对他比较陌生，他也不知道，他觉得那边可能有些什么危险，所以说他就会待在那个比较小的地方。OK。So that is our basic survival. That's even the first thing that a human being will do. In a dangerous situation, the first thing we will try to do is find a safe place and hide. Let's imagine that you're in a place and there's monsters outside. The first thing you're going to want to do is find a safe place to hide because you don't know what kind of monsters are out there. Similar to the cat, it's a new environment. There are all kinds of monsters, possibly, in this environment. The cat feels it's dangerous, and so the cat finds a safe place to hide. And the cat will wait. The cat will wait for a while to see if there is some kind of monster, some dangerous thing that comes and tries to find the cat and try to kill the cat. But the cat will wait until. So what's happening here? There are these fear and stress hormones inside the cat. Remember that the hypothalamus will control these fear and stress hormones because. The cat has a memory of what is a safe place and what what is sorry. It has memories of what is a safe place, and it also has memories of the dangerous situations, the dangerous kinds of monsters, animals, dogs, whatever it is that the cat has experienced in its life. And because it has those memories, the hypothalamus will release these. Fear and stress hormones that will make the cat want to find a safe place and hide. But eventually, after some time, it could be 20 minutes, it could be an hour. I don't know. Eventually, those fear and stress hormones will reduce. They will go down, and the cat will then realize, okay, no, no one or nothing is trying to hurt me or kill me. Now, I'm going to explore this new environment. So, the hypothalamus, when it wants, when when the fear and stress hormones are low, the hypothalamus will release this hormone called dopamine. Dopamine, dopamin, is very much related to exploration. It gives us motivation to explore. And it does that by making us feel pleasure when we find when we find something new, when we discover something. So the cat will slowly and carefully walk around its environment. It will look at everything, go inside everything, smell everything, and slowly, what it's doing is it's creating a new map inside its head. It's slowly exploring this new territory. Now, of course. The brain, the brain of the cat, it's a normal cat, will not just release a lot of dopamine and make the cat explore, 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 because the brain is also connected to those memories, and so it will try and balance those things: the fear and stress hormones, which make the which make the cat worry about danger, will will keep the cat slow. It will it will make the cat. Find safe places. Look for more of these safe places and wait a little bit before it continues exploring. The hypothalamic cat, 
does not do that. The hypothalamic cat cannot remember these dangerous situations that it has been in. And that's why it will constantly explore. It doesn't know that there are dangers in the environment until it finally meets danger, until it meets a big dog that's trying to kill it. Then it will feel afraid. But it doesn't have any memories of those kinds of monsters. So the normal cat will slowly, carefully explore, create the map inside its head and remember where different things are, what all the rooms look like. And eventually, once it has explored the whole new environment and created this map inside its head, it will probably not continue exploring your friend's house. Alyssa? Hypothesis,还有些其他的部分 它会有一个就是记忆，就是呃记忆，就是呃觉得到这个是呃安全的，或者这个是危险的，它就会有这种记忆，有这个经验，然后它就会在那里待呃待一段时间，可能二十分钟，可能一个小时，有可能还会更多
就是嗯，就是如果你到一个地方，就是有些什么不好的事情发生了。然后你不懂得怎么去 explore， 就是怎么去找到那个食物，你可能会死掉，因为没有吃的也没有喝的，呃，而且它是对，所以说为什么它是这个大脑里面就这个部分占比最重的百分之五十左右，因为它就是保证，呃，无论是人类还是动物，这、就是一个本能，就是保证它的一起存活。OK。The feelings that we get. When we want to explore, when we want to find new things, is curiosity, joy, hope, and interest. And the things that help us, the things that our hypothalamus uses to control how much exploration we do, is negative emotions: pain, anxiety, disgust. We need both of these parts. We need the. The negative emotions, which are created by stress hormones, and for example,、uh, cortisol, pejuruchun, and adrenaline, shanshangshiansu. These are the things that help us to control how much we explore. If you're in the forest and you continuously explore without being a little bit afraid or a little bit careful, there are other dangerous things in the in the forest that can kill you and eat you. This is why we have this kind of balance between negative emotions that keep us careful and positive emotions that make us want to go out and explore. Alyssa. 就是它这一个部分，呃，它是有呃比较积极的一面和比较比较负面的，就是一些东西，呃，比如说你去一个森林那里去探险，嗯，就是它会就你当然你自身会保持一定的，就是这个紧张，就是那种呃那种恐惧，因为你的确森林里面有些东西。是可以杀死你的，呃，但是你也同时会保持这个呃比较积极的这一部分，然后想要去探索更多的东西。OK。OK。There's one last experiment that I want to talk about related to dopamine. Dopamine, by the way, is not the pleasure hormone. Dopamine is kind of like the seeking hormone. It's the one that makes us want something new, makes us want to find something. Often, when we check our phones twenty times, thirty times, fifty times for no reason, every time we check our phone, we get a little bit of dopamine because we have looked for something. We have tried to find something new. Now listen. 说这个 dopamine 就是多巴胺，它这个鲍勃说它其实不是跟那个快乐、欢就开心这么呃相关联的，反而它是跟 seeking 就是呃就是那种呃寻找什么东西呃而相关联的。比如说你就是看手机，看那个什么。来电看了三四十遍，你要一直在那看，其实就是因为你呃期待某些东西，你就是想要等着它出现。就这个 hormone 其实跟呃那个这这这这这种相关的。OK。So here is the experiment. You take a monkey and you don't allow the monkey to have a lot of food. And then, every day, you take the monkey to a special room, and the monkey has to pull a lever, or let's say the monkey has to push a button. Let's make it easier. The monkey has to push a button. When the monkey pushes the button, a a small a small box will open, and there will be some food in the box. And the monkey will quickly go and eat the food. Now, when you're measuring the monkey's dopamine levels, what we notice is 
the monkey pushes the button and gets the food and then we notice the dopamine level goes higher so we thought okay dopamine must give the monkey pleasure it makes the monkey feel good when it gets the food it presses the button it gets the food it feels good but we found that after some time if you if you make the monkey go into the room before the monkey even presses the button it will already have dopamine and even if the monkey does not get the food inside the box maybe it presses the button but there's no food in the box that dopamine will be released even though there's no food when it's just pressing the button but if you do this now let's say okay you you sometimes have food in the box and you sometimes don't have food in the box so the monkey is not exactly sure whether if it presses the button it's going to get food or whether if it presses the button it's not going to get food and when you do this to the monkey let's say you compare in the first part of the experiment the monkey will release a little dopamine when it presses the button and gets the food it expects that it's going to get the food but in the second part of the experiment when the monkey is not sure because sometimes it presses the button and sometimes it gets food and sometimes it doesn't get the food the monkey before it presses the button the monkey's dopamine levels will be much much more because it's not sure it's not sure whether it's going to get what it wants so dopamine interestingly is not really about pleasure it's about this kind of hope this curiosity about finding something about seeking something Alyssa Curiosity. It's curious. Uh, uh, what does seeking mean? What does seeking mean? To seek is to try to find something. Oh. Okay. 